Hello, everybody, and welcome to TNM Unplugged and Zoran Todorovic Interconnected Podcasts. And I'm so glad and happy that you're here with us today because we have a very special recording with a very, very special person who is dear and near to my heart that I know for a very long time. And our life keep, keep on connecting and intertwining. We were closed and we distant and we closed again. And recently he popped up into my universe and I was like, we now need to record this podcast and also we need to start collaborating together. And here is why. Stephen Rappaport is a very special man. He is multidimensional creationalist. You know, when I think about people like him, like him, I think about all these different layers of creation, all these different layers of depth or the different layers of who he really is. He's multifaceted. He is an actor. He's also a director. He's singer and songwriter. He is also a theater performer. He's also performed in uh, movie productions as well. And he is a playwright. He has written and performed and toured around the world with his solo theater performances internationally. And he has taken part of numerous theater and film performances. And he is also a profound teacher. And as you know, a part of our podcast is to elevate your heart, to elevate your soul, to elevate your mind to the different frequency when you can really free yourself up to engage in yourself in a completely different level, when you can step away from your life, learn something new, enrich your life, and really experience this sense of elevation. In his workshops, Intuition and Action, that he has given and conducted globally, I can tell you that he has transformed people's life. And, you know, when I read, you know, the testimonials, when I talk to people who experience his work, they always come back and say, oh, my God, you know, I am a completely different person as a result of being with Stephen. So, powerful teacher, multidimensional creationalist, welcome to this podcast. So lovely to have you with us today. Thank you, Zoran. Great to be here. Fantastic. Yeah. Anything that you would like to add about yourself that I didn't introduce, you know, that so that the audience get to know you better? Or are you happy with my da-da introduction? I'm happy with your da-da, and they'll get to know me as we as we roll along. All right. So let's focus on, on your body of work because for our audience, it's very important to understand, you know, how do you approach this intuition and action when you actually say that the foundation and the most important tool that people get through this work with you uh, through really understanding their intuition and action is what you call the third thing so can we dive into that and you share with us what is the third thing how people get in relationship with it how would you describe it as i feel this is the foundation of, of your work yes well, well, the third thing, the way I see it, and this is something I came up with on my own. There's, uh, if you Google it, there's other people who, you know, ideas are cheap. People use the term too, but it is something that came out of my work in, in various, uh, my, my work with di different various uh, art forms, creative mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's evolved into something much more. The third thing is always there. What I'm doing is paying attention to it, getting people to be aware of it. It's happening right now in our dialogue. It's happening right now. It's a constant give and take. It's a negotiation. It's happening. It's what's happening in between. So it's not about me and it's not about you. It's what's hap how we meet. So it's about meeting. It's about intimacy uh, about about that very special it's about presence it mm. really is about a lot of what i do is about practicing presence finding the value of presence and that's all about the third thing uh, yes go ahead so i guess you know for the third thing to kind of be in a full uh, presence in our conversation or in anybody's life you mentioned that in order for this to really be there this untouchable potential space or the field yes. or the presence of of god or the presence of yes. source yes yes there's something bigger there right yeah absolutely yes uh 
you know, Rumi says, uh, between the ideas of what is good and what is bad, there is a field. Mm -hmm. Meet me there. Mm -hmm. Meet me there. It's where life is. It's what it's about engagement. Whenever you're engaged, the the third thing is is you're you're in touch with it. Mm -hmm. Whenever you lose track of time, you're going into another dimension. That's about being present. Mm -hmm. Time doesn't matter. Doesn't you're involved. You're engaged. And as a performer, or as if you're speaking, or in a relation. If you are engaged uh, as a performer, when, when there's onlookers, when there's an audience, if you're engaged, people know it. Mm -hmm. This happens all the time in the worship. Everyone knows when it's happening. There's no, you don't have to ask. You don't have to say, did you, you feel it in the room? It's something that happens. Uh, and people cannot stop looking at you also. It's a charisma, it builds charisma. So I'm super curious about this. I mean, I, I, and I'm also practical. I'm not, I don't want to jump too fast, too quickly, but how yeah. do we get to be that present and that engaged? So if you were to work with me or share a few things with me that, you know, that will get me into that space of, of profound presence, yes. when people can feel it, and you're absolutely right. I know when I'm watching the theater performance and the actor is fully present. I know when I'm seeing a teacher who is extremely present, I'm always online. I presence myself with them because yeah, I'm yeah. mesmerized with it. So yeah. how do they or how do we mm -hmm. get into that space? What is our journey into it? The, the, my super objective in the workshop is to get people to trust even a fraction uh, to increase their trust in their creativity in their impulses in their um allowing material to present itself moment to moment to get out of the way to get over yourself and allow things to happen within this negotiation like we're having right now I haven't prepared this. You're giving me impulses. I'm returning impulse. And, and my mind is bubbling. And there's also, so, so one of the ways that I do it in the workshop is actually through creativity, about, it, about making something. And I do it in a, almost in a random way, very simple, a simple exercise. This exercise doesn't matter. Nothing has to be good. Being good creates something that will, in, the need to be good, will interfere with this. Makes, if I'm self-conscious about what's happening now, I can't be here with you. Right. Uh, so it's, it's about getting this critic, the judge out of there mm -hmm. and allowing yourself to be here with everything. So even if, so, uh, if I think often the student thinks they're doing something wrong and they give themselves an excuse to uh, go out, I do an exercise maybe with sound and they start laughing because the intimacy is so strong, so strong or any emotion that they think, oh, this, this is too, no, I got to pull myself together. No, be here with this wonderful, uh, spontaneous, a true life experience of a, a loss of control. I'm laughing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's the loss of control uh, that makes people think that they're doing something. They're doing something so right. And it's a golden moment. I love that. It's a golden <laughs> moment. The loss of control makes people do something really right. And it's a golden moment. Absolutely. Yes. And I also love what you shared that it comes the creativity of creating and making something facilitates people to get into that present moment without being attached to that outcome. It needs to be perfect. It needs to look like that. It needs to be 
you know, expressed like that, it's just the creativity for the sake of creativity that would presence you deeply with yourself in the moment. Uh, you know, that's a, that's a, and we, nowadays we don't have that much time, you know, to be that creative and that present, right? Right. And you're saying something, it's so important. I think that's more, one of my major missions mm. to allow yourself, to allow people. That's my revolution. Give yourself the time. Mm -hmm. to do something and you can be in touch with the third thing by yourself mm -hmm. creating something painting something making anything writing you scratching the surface allowing without having to, i don't have to make anything brilliant i don't have to show anyone i don't have to impress anyone to give yourself a space even if it's 10 minutes every day journaling can do it mm -hmm. um but but uh, to give yourself this some where you allow things to unravel just by scratching the surface. Mm -hmm. That's how I prepared for this today. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I never I never know if, if it's going to work, and it almost always does. I, I I start writing. Oh, and there it is, and there it is. This today's poem, today's word. I record it. I put it up on. You know, I I do it, or I paint. I make. <laughs> Yesterday, I, I made a painting. It doesn't Wonderful. have to be good. It doesn't have to be good. It, but, but, and, 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 and Zoran, this is the process. What goes on is like, oh, God, well, oh, this is fun. Ah, oh, this is great. Oh, I haven't done this for, this is, oh, this is terrible. This is horrible. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm going to keep going and, and scratch it. And, and say, oh, man. And then it starts, and suddenly it becomes something. This is uh, an extra, and then I and I write afterwards. Yeah. So and then you write afterwards, and that because because you brought up so much while you've been involved with this, mm -hmm. that that's something I recommend to my students mm -hmm. uh, every day. To even if it takes you five minutes or three mm -hmm. hours, doesn't matter. Just accomplish it. I need to ask you something very important that pops up when I'm coaching people around that myself as well, yes. is that there is this collective belief that shows up in people that they are not creative enough. You yeah. know, I, I sit with somebody and I would, or like yourself, I would say, why don't you, or, you know, it will be great for you to express your creativity. And then there is something in that collective human psyche that says, well, you know, this is for artists. I am not an artist. I mean, I, I am really, you know, no, this is for somebody more special and talented and more gifted. You know, I'm not yet. So how do you, <laughs> how do you approach that? I mean, because how do you get people to really step into that artistic creative part? Because I, I hold the belief that everybody's an, is an artist, right? Everybody's creative, isn't it? I agree. And I agree. And, and a lot of people, uh, sometimes artists will disagree because they want to hold their own space. <laughs> and I say, come on, man. It, it's there. It's there. Uh, I, I prove to everyone in, in my classes uh, the, uh, that, that everyone has brilliance because when, brilliance, the word brilliance, when mm -hmm. we're talking about engagement, when you're engaged in the third thing, people become brilliant as if supernova as in a star as in at, because because energy is shooting out of them yeah the brilliance is there and everyone sees it if they keep engaged if they keep the intimacy no matter what happens if you if you stand up in front of the people if you're giving a lecture a speech uh, presenting something mm -hmm. If you're in it and you can be prepared, but you also have to be ready for anything. If you uh, acknowledge the fact that people that, that you're nervous, that, that, that's okay. That's great. They'll love you for it because that's them. You're giving a mirror as well. You know, so moment to moment, wherever you're at, I, I, I'm go, going quite wild. But you said, you said, how do I get people to trust in that? 
That's it. That was my thing. Yeah. How do we how do we get ourselves and everybody and people and humanity and mankind to trust in that? That was yeah, that's yes. a great question. And the yeah. thing it what what it is, it takes practice. It takes some dis so I try to impress it on them mm -hmm. that that a discipline is a gift to yourself. Some people are allergic to this word. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, yeah. they, you know, uh, fascistic or something. But <laughs> it's a gift. It's a gift to yourself. Yeah. To eat, especially when you resist. It's mm. like, oh, no, I don't feel like it today. Doesn't resistance when the, behind resistance, more gold. More gold. Always. That's why when people are resistant in my workshop, it's like, that's, yes, uh -huh. I, I just accept it and we, we keep going. Because mm -hmm. I, I also, that's a technique I use in my workshop is I work with people. I, I, sh I create a safe place mm -hmm. to do unsafe things mm -hmm. where they, they're, and the, they're barely aware what they're starting to tap into with my words. And it's a slow build and it goes deep. Mm -hmm. It's challenging, very challenging. I, so people have to be prepared for, prepared for that. But one thing I don't do is I don't ask people to tell me about their personal lives. There's, there's a place for that. But in my framework, I don't want to know. I don't want people to start because I do it all through the choices they make through their imagination. Right. And, and those choices are personal. And the personal comes up anyway without having to be, uh, and vulnerability comes up too. Yeah. Without having to say this is about me, there's emotions come up, everything, everything comes up from the emotion, the mm -hmm. subconscious. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's amazingly beautiful to watch. That's why I'm so enthusiastic. Yeah. I, I love that you I, I love I mean, that you shared, you know, that you don't you don't really want to know about their personal lives and that you're figuring out everything through the choices they made through their imagination. So there yeah. is a an activation of an imagination. Yes. Again, it's an extremely important level of presencing because I'm witnessing nowadays because of the technological revolution and the, the addiction to the technology, basically. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're de departing from that level of, of the third thing presencing when the imagination is so potent that you get in relationship with your own creative process. And yeah. and and I think that the side effect of this is also that we tend to talk a lot about our lives because actually we're not going into the space of imagination and tapping into our creativity to really be in the process instead of that we're talking about it you know talking about ourselves instead of us being our, our project you know our, us being you know our biggest piece of art biggest piece of mastery we have to engage with that imagination i love that you that you mentioned that right yeah yeah mm. yes so trust is one something really important right to get people to trust in that and you, and you are facilitating the trust through the processes you don't even talk about it by creating a very profound safe space when people can do unsafe things you know that's yeah. safety and intimacy it's very important yes yeah and then through that we're getting into the space of imagination so when people are in that space of trust and safety uh, uh, imagination pops up right by itself uh, well, the, the tasks are all imaginative choices. Mm -hmm. See, I, I, uh, for example, uh, I, I might ask a class to even like the first thing. I, I said, uh, okay, just write um, a, 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 a it, it might look like it. We don't have to say it's a poem, but it's, a, a, you know, some lines. There, make some rhyming going on. I'm going to give you 90 seconds to do it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be good. It doesn't have to make sense. It doesn't just just write whatever happens. Six run. Make a little rhyming going on if you can. 
uh, uh, 90 seconds. And then the question mark is, but what was you right about? I don't know. <laughs> uh, and so they do that. So uh -huh. they do that. And I also say to make, to, to raise the stakes even, to liberate them more. This is like one of the first things I do. It, I, I, I say, I say, not only does this not have to be any good, but you're not even going to be responsible for it. Wow. People won't even know that you wrote this. So handle that freedom. See you in 90 seconds. You know? Wow. And then and then they do that. Mm. And then someone else deals with what they wrote in, in a way that I work with the text in a very special way mm. to uh, after I after several hours of work, I come back to these texts mm -hmm. and then I have different people read them in a certain way with this certain way of absolute engagement into the third thing. And then mm -hmm. the words, Zoran, this is. Oh, I, oh, I can hear it already. Um, resonant. They, these, these po things that people think are nothing that makes no sense. It's like, Holy shit. Yeah. It's a, often. And then those people imbue their imagination mm -hmm. in an event. I said, okay, use your imagination. Something extreme happened because there's this profundity in the way I asked them to read. Mm -hmm. Something happened. What happened right before the, a person in your imagination, nobody here, wrote these someone someone wrote these someone in your imagine after a very high stakes event happened and then they write what happened mm -hmm. and that is the beginning of the snowball mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah. it, it, then it it builds from so those choices simple choices of the words way it's written what happened five minutes yeah five minutes to write what happened those choices mm -hmm. at the beginning of a story mm -hmm. you know and yeah. and and then without revealing too much because i don't like to talk too much about it mm -hmm. uh yeah, it's a process. I mean, it's people need to get to the process, but we're getting the sense of it. I think it's very important, you know, yeah. for the audience just to kind yes. of sense it. And I can already feel when you are talking and you're getting into that zone of the third thing of the profound yeah. presence, you know, you can always see it where you are going to end up. And I, and yeah. for me, the most important things that we really want to highlight is about giving yourself permission. And I love that piece of the exercise when you said, and I don't even hold them responsible for yes, that yes. writing. You yes. know, that sense of freedom yes. and permission to be yourself fully, it's amazing. Yes. Yeah. Because it's so far away from how we're taught how to express and learn because we're consistently held accountable exactly. for our creativity, for our performance, to how we show up in the life and, you know, our responsibilities and choices. So we have this consistent you know responsibility that feels like burden yeah and that stifles our discipline because you don't want to be disciplined because you need to be responsible all the time right so yeah. when you give the people permission to free themselves up they show up completely differently yes yeah. yes and that and this this also builds such a enormous trust in the group that's why it becomes very safe because everyone vulnerability it's very clear it's like uh, love and vulnerability. I mean, pe people love each other. People end up loving it. They never want to stop. They, it's almost always that, there's a, oh, but, uh, but uh, can, you know, can we do more? Uh, uh, can I get everyone's email? You know, it's like the, the experience is deep. It's profound. People have, when people are vulnerable in front of each other, is, is something I say, everyone wants to see each other naked. And I don't mean without any clothes. I mean, naked, stripped down, there, present, 
uh, vulnerable. It's amazing how beautiful people come everywhere. So when it comes to this vulnerability, which I personally love, I also see that, you know, humanity mm -hmm. is challenged by that. You know, it's yeah. challenged to really allow this disarmoring of yourself that you become, as you call it, fully naked, present, yeah. vulnerable. Yeah. I'm sure there is a process behind the work, what you do in the workshop to get people to that space. But how would you, what would you like to share for the listeners just around your take on vulnerability and why this is so important in daily life, for example? Yeah. I think vulnerability as a practice is, is extremely important in relationships, in all relationships. I, I, and I want to qualify that. It's not always good to be vulnerable. You, mm -hmm. you have to protect yourself sometimes. But, but to create a space where you can be vulnerable, to create this kind of intimacy at the workplace too, among teams, the ability to really to communicate with each other, the acceptance of ideas, expressing ideas can be very vulnerable. We're all trained at school mm -hmm. to not ask questions. How horrible is that? Children are go to school to, and they learn if they ask a question, they might, they might get ridiculed by other students. Yeah. They, they, they might be, uh, you know, I've also noticed bringing up that working with teachers has been extreme at school teachers has been mm -hmm. very challenging for me. One of the more challenging. The groups. <laughs> because, because they don't want to fail. They don't want to make mistakes. And yeah. I, I say, I, I tell people, you don't have to be good. You don't have to do things even right. It's not no shame, it, but I will tell you when you're when you misunderstand me and you're making a mistake and you're and you're not in it, you're not on it. See, that's that I I'm guiding people. Come on it to to get it to get engaged, to get it feel what it is the third thing. And I I can remember some teachers in, in Swedish just the hand oh behogle and that's a very negative thing in Sweden. Mm -hmm. It means uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, this, but this is un, this is uncomfortable. Yeah, it's uncomfortable. Okay, uh, I, is that all right? Yes, it is all right to be uncomfortable, but yes. being comfortable with and, and and acknowledge it, use it, play with it. Yeah, you know. Uh, and accept it. Yeah. And especially, I mean, making mistakes, failure. I mean, that's that's the number one rule. And you don't learn if you don't make mistakes. Yeah. And you need to ask questions. I tell people, if you have a question anytime, it's a gift to me if you ask the question. It's a gift to everyone in the room. But it, it's definitely a gift to me because it makes me articulate myself in another way mm -hmm. and that I get to use my creativity to make myself more clear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you see, even with that, asking questions and, and giving people permission not to feel stupid because the conditioning is, you know, I ask questions, I don't understand something and especially yep. in a group scenario, I feel less than. Yes. You know, I can't get it really, so therefore I need to clarify. <laughs> you know what I mean? Instead of perceiving it as a gift to the, to the to the group, basically, when you ask the question, you get teacher to clarify, and you get everybody else to learn from that insightful question as well. You know, to space of listening again, reframing. It's a lot of reframing of how we are interacting with one another in yes. our vulnerability, basically. Right? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. So abundance of work so so what would you like to kind of share with the audience as a take out of this conversation anything that you think that you know we can practice together or they can practice together or they can play with or experience and explore with i would really love you know if you can 
give them something as a takeout leading to your classes uh, in the future? Uh, well, like I said, having a discipline of facing an empty page and making choices to put stuff on it. I'm speaking very, just that, whether it's words or anything, working on it, I'm calling it these days, scratching the surface. Scratch, little scratching the surface. Mm -hmm. You are on your way to a victory, making something, completing something. Yeah. I, I often use the metaphor, I, I love to swim in the Swedish lakes. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's cold, This, but when is it not refreshing? When is it not like, uh, you don't want to do it. This is, I, no, not today, not today, not, I'm not. And then you do it. Yes. And it's like the best thing you've ever done in your life. That's what it feels like. Yes. This is the same thing. This is jumping in. So one thing to do, and and one, and I I, I just started a new class and I had a lot of, oh, I hate painting. How was it? Uh, I also get people to articulate. How was it to do the exercise? That's an exercise too. Mm -hmm. He says, I hate painting. Oh, this was horrible. Oh God, I, I never, and it's like, that is what you should do. Perfect thing to do because you don't have to be good at it. Get a sense of what it is. The reason why this particular person, and then she showed the painting. It was beautiful. It, well, I'm telling you, it was, it was abstract, but it was, she, she didn't like it. It was, it was great it was wonderful and great 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 it doesn't have to be great but i wanted to look at it study it look yeah. at look at dynamic there was stuff going on in it all over the place mm -hmm. uh, you know uh and it, it it's this 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 thing of resistance so what i what i would encourage people to do is i i i have colors out Sit down in front of an empty piece of paper, put color on it, continue to put color. You don't have to enjoy yourself. You don't have to like the painting. You don't have to, and then get into it. I think ultimately, mm -hmm. if you're having fun, even if, if you get into a, the zone, mm -hmm. that, that's, that's, you want to lose track of time. Yeah. You want to lose track of time. That's, that's, that's the most important thing. The third thing, it's actually us getting into the space when, you, when we lose track of time. Yeah. And Stephen, I remember, again, you know, I'm linking it to the digitality of our world. Before, for me, I was able to lose track of time a lot. Yeah. You know, nowadays, because of these interruptions and pinging and dinging and this message and that message yeah. and this digital and this Instagram and that, la, 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 it's more and more challenging Yes. I think for people in general to step into the third thing when they can really lose track of time, which is a gold, right? Yeah. Isn't it? Um, you know, I can tell you also, and to share with everyone, I resist every day. Mm -hmm. Every day. And all, all the time today, uh, too. It worked again. It worked again. And when all is lost, uh, you know, I have a song also, it, it, it goes, uh, and, and it's, it's true. It's, it, I lose my confidence every morning. That means that I lose my confidence at least once a day. As I return from that eternal world of dreams, I lose my confidence, so it seems. Was it something I ate last night, or am I really a fraud? Dreamt I had a thousand watermelons and I lost them all, 
When I had them, it was something. The feeling was ecstatic. Losing on the tailspin created quite a panic. A losing on the tailspin. And then the chorus is, ah! screaming. Ah! <laughs> uh, and then it comes back and the, uh, there's several verses. But it's a, it, it, it's true. I am not, I never pose myself to be a guru. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know what I can say? And I, I, I don't care how it's, what I've learned about myself. I'm a damn good teacher. Sorry, <laughs> but I'm not, I am not a guru. And I don't want people to be addicted to me. Yeah, of course. I want them to find it, that they can do it themselves. That's really a lot what I'm up to. Yeah. I, you know? Yeah. So, so having a discipline like this, like the, by putting color on a page and writing that, you know, I did this in the millennium in two, year 2000. That this was my, um, you know, New Year's resolution. And I did it for like several hundred days in a row. And I got so many, much stuff out of it without having, I got songs out of it. I guess, you know, you don't need to get anything, but you do get something every day if you actually complete it, complete this agreement you have with yeah, yourself. Yeah, with yourself. Yeah. And also having a result that's there. It's a victory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have a friend who, who said, I, I take the quote, he says, a, vi a victory a day keeps suicide away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it, it, it doesn't have to be a literal suicide, but it's, it's, an act, it, it's a metaphorical, uh, keep yourself alive this way. Yeah, keep yourself alive this way. That's exactly what I got. You know, you keep yourself alive in yes. this way. Yeah. Stephen, yeah. I cannot wait for our audience to, to experience you in the workshops and, yes. and the classes that are coming up on TNM Life. I'm so yeah. excited to learn, to listen from you. And you are an amazing teacher. You know, this, this whole conversation today gave so much to so many people on so many different levels. So thank you for that. Thank you for, for coming to this podcast, for, for being who you are and for shining your light inside of the world. Any last sentence? How would you like to leave the audience? Uh, uh, you know, it's simply like I, I love doing this work. It, it really is. It's, it's, it's part of my work as an artist. Mm -hmm. It's research for me. I'm taking the workshop while doing it. Yeah. I, I love to work and I love all different situations, working with different people, diverse people. Uh, I work with smaller groups. I work with teams. Mm -hmm. uh, in my standard workshop, I work six sessions for 90 minutes each or something like that. And, and I work with small groups so we can go far. Yeah, and deep. <laughs> Thank you so much, Stephen. Once again, the audience, the listeners, thank you so much for tuning in to the TNM Unplugged and Zoran Todorovic Interconnected podcast. I really hope, and I know, not only hope, I know this was a good uh, usage of your time. Elevate yourself, be happy, be brilliant, be wonderful. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next week. Bye for now. Thanks, Zoran. <laughs>